Now, first I'll answer some questions from the last session. Does God forget us if we don't pray? God knows everyone all the time, including non-Christians. God knows what is in the thoughts of non-Christians and everyone. And Christians, even when we are weak, God still remembers us and God still plans to bless us. So He never forgets anyone. Now, but of course the relationship with certain people are stronger because these people, uh, they really respond to God. They love God and then God will have a stronger plan in their life. But even weak Christians, God pays a lot of attention to every single person. Just as He take care of the birds. Why does He take care of the birds? There's so many birds in the world, but He take care of every bird. So, so we know that He cares about each person. He never forget any one of us. But when we don't pray, then we will suffer because then we lose a strong connection with God and then He cannot bless us as much as He wants to. Now, you can think of it like this. The blessings of God is continually coming down, but when people don't pray or when people don't have faith, the door is open. The, I, mean, I mean, the door is closed in the heart. Then we cannot receive the blessings. That's why so many Christians are suffering and they they are unhappy, they don't have the joy of the Lord because they, they're blocking God. But if we open to God, any time we open to God and desire God, then we'll receive help and joy and peace and strength and help from God. At the same time, also some people don't learn to pray with the heart, with the spirit, because people sometimes they just pray with the mind and uh, just telling God, God, I need this. I love, I need. I need. I need money. I need a husband. I need a, uh, opportunities. I need everything. I need more friends. When they just need things, they just want something. Then the heart is not open. It's like I want to get something from you. It's not a relationship. Like you can think of two person dating. Now, if you date someone and want to chase after the woman that God has prepared for you, when you talk, you won't talk like this. Oh, please do this for me. Tomorrow do this for me. Next day do this for me. I need your help. Please do this for me. You won't keep telling her what you want her to do. You would want to build up the relationship. So for, uh, if people just ask for something, then they the heart is not on the other person. So if just people just ask for things, then the heart is not on God. And then and a question. Uh, if He already knows our need, do we need to remind Him? Uh, we, Even though God knows our need, we still ask. But I want to say that very often, even when we don't ask, God prepare for us. That's the wonderful thing about God. I'm sorry, I didn't put on the mic. So the voice was not as strong. Right? Let me put this on. <clears throat> so, I have experienced this many times. That I did not ask for certain things, but God prepared something for me far better than I thought. So that's the wonderful thing about God. He always has wonderful things prepared for us. Now, but we still want to ask and pray and ask. For instance, we want to pray for revival. Now, from when I pray, I pray more for His kingdom. Okay? Pray for other people, other than praying for myself. I do pray for myself. When I pray for myself, I pray for opportunities to bless more people. Give me strength to bless more people. Give me wisdom to bless more people. God takes care of other things for me. So I, I don't think that I have to remind God of Oh, please take care of my health. If not, you will forget my health. Please take care of my, uh, the need of money. If not, you will forget about my need of money. I don't think we need to remind God of everything we need. Now, there are some people who keep telling God what they want, every detail, little detail. Yes, I want my child to go to this kindergarten. Please help him to go to this kindergarten. 
Now, God has a wonderful plan. Our plan might not be the best. And uh, now, f- when we pray for certain things like revival, when we pray, God also works in us. For instance, Lord, please bring a revival to my life. Please bring a revival to this country, to the church. When we pray that, God's Holy Spirit will stir in our heart to bring a revival in our heart first. And when we pray for someone to be saved, God will stir in our heart that we have the motivation to change, to bring the person to Christ. So very often when we pray, it's not for us to change God, it's for God to change us so that we have the desire and the strength and the wisdom to help someone. Okay, and um, what if we motivate people by grace to pray and serve God and they don't do that? And we tell them, who is the best to you? Who do the good things to, to you in your life? God can do all these wonderful things. And if you neglect all the wonderful things God has done for you, what happens is you suffer. Can you bear the consequences if God is not blessing your life? Now that's reminding them of how wonderful and how important God's blessing. If you really want God's blessing, want your life to go better, why do you neglect the one who can bless you in every way? Because many people don't believe that God is the source of all blessings. And they don't believe that the relationship with God will bring more blessings. Now this are very clear from the Bible that seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to us. And when we love God, God will prepare for some things that we never imagined. So the Bible tells us that. And everything, the world and everything in it belongs to the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord. And honor and power and everything belongs to the Lord. So we don't need to worry. God has everything in His hand and He has the p- power to overcome Satan. So when we have Jesus, we have the power to overcome Satan. So He has all authority. So when people believe that, first, God is in control. You know, if they don't believe God is in control, then they have no motivation because they think they still have the mentality, I depend on myself for blessings. That's the mentality of many Christians. I have to depend on my work and my, on my family to provide for me. Now, it's true that our family does provide for us, but it's God who gives our family members health so that they can work and then we can have money. Finally, it is God who provides for us. And then sometimes something unfortunate happened to someone in the family. God still continues to bless us with different ways. So it's God who is responsible for us. So it's very important for us to teach our people that all blessings came from God and God has everything in His hand. If you love God and trust God and serve God, the best thing will happen to you. Now to serve God doesn't mean you have to serve God with a position in the church. People can be serving God, you know, sharing with people about Jesus' work and encouraging people, praying for people, leading them to Jesus, all these are serving God. Or helping Christians in the church, uh, doing things for the church, all these are serving God. So, then the Bible promises that when we use our talents for His kingdom, then He will bless us. And re- He will reward us in the future. He will bless us in this life. And Jesus said, when you give up all these things for me, you'll get it hundred times more in this world. And then eternal life after that. So we know that God can give us all things. But when people don't believe that, we have to build up their faith in God. First, about the proofs of God. Now, one time I can talk about the proofs that God is real. The Bible is God's Word. What are the real proofs? How do we know that there is really a God and, and this God is the one who speaks to us through the Bible? That Jesus Christ is God, how do we know for sure? So if they know that, Jesus Christ is really Son of God and everything is in His hand and He promises, he promises to bless all those who love Him and follow Him, then there is no reason not to obey Him and love Him. If people don't obey Him and love Him, well, they bear the consequences themselves. They chase up the girls, but their marriage will be broken down. 
everything in their life will have problem. They, they won't get what they want. They will suffer in the whole lifetime. They suffer. They work hard, very hard, and they don't get what they want. Is that what they want? So we encourage people and tell them, God is the one who wants to bless you. So that's first by grace. Let them know God is real. God wants to bless you. Everything is in God's hands. So do you want God to bless you? If you want God to bless you, you trust in Him and have a good relationship with Him, and pray to Him and obey Him, and then God will bless you in every way. Now, when people don't believe that, then we have to give them the warnings. The Bible does have warnings. If they don't obey, then they are the wicked and lazy servant. They will be cast into the outer darkness. They will be cast into the lake of fire. And in this life, they are on themselves. They're not on God. They're not depending on God. They, God is not responsible for them. They are responsible for themselves. And they have no control over the what happens to their life. So, do you want that to happen to you? So, we teach people that the best thing that can, we, we can do for our lives is to trust in God and have a good relationship with Him and obey Him in every way. And it, to follow God, most important is the loving relationship first. And the loving relationship and the praying is building up the loving relationship and then obedience and then serving God. First is a relationship with God and then uh, uh, obeying Him and serving Him uh, because the relationship with God is the first and foremost and it will also change our life, change our spiritual life, change our, give us strength and uh, change our uh, nature so that we carry the nature of God. Okay, um, does God have bad motives on those who don't love Him? When a person, you know, God's heart is always to move people to follow Him. God will discipline people if they don't obey God. And God can punish people. But God won't say, I will make sure he'll go to hell. God doesn't do that. God doesn't punish the person so that he'll go to hell. But God can discipline the person and He can punish the person to let him know that if he depends on himself, he can you know, he'll have all kinds of difficulties. But if he trusts in God, then the best thing will happen to him. So God can teach people that. Now, so for Christians, God never want to give up on the person. God always speak to them. There are some people who have forsaken the Lord for years, but God still speak in the heart to move them back. And then for non-Christians, God still move in the heart. But if they balk God, God still wants to give them opportunities in this lifetime to believe in Jesus. God doesn't want to say, okay, now this person wants to come to me, but I'm going to block him. God is not going to do that. He doesn't have the motive to stop people coming to him. When he punishes, when he disciplines and punishes people, the, mo the reason is to bring people to him, not to stop people from going to him. Does God hate those who don't love Him and have bad plans about them? God doesn't hate people. But God can chase after people for the wrongdoings. They, he can punish them. But God doesn't do it out of hatred. He will punish them so that they will repent. If they don't repent, God can continue to give punishment so that the person will repent. But if the person doesn't repent, they face anger when they die. But even now, the Bible does say that um, he who doesn't obey the Lord, you know, he who believes in the Lord will have eternal life. He who believes in the Son will have eternal life. He who doesn't obey the Son will not have eternal life and the wrath of God is on them. So they will have, they can face the punishment of God. But God doesn't do it out of hatred. God does it out of love. His punishment is out of love. He doesn't hate people because you sin, I hate you, I hate you. But He punished them out of His righteousness, His justice. God punishes out of His justice that He has to punish because He is a just God. And when people uh, try to attack God's kingdom, 
attack Christians, God will punish them, but God still loves them. We can see that from the people who try to attack Christians. If you know some religions, the people they try to attack Christians, but still God moves a number of them to, to believe in Jesus. So we can see that God still loves them and want to change our life. So out of the heart of God, He doesn't have hatred, but He will have punishment out of justice. And does he have bad plans for them? The bad plans came from sins. You know, when people just have lust and adultery, the, the life will, you know, uh, will have all kinds of problems. God doesn't plan, okay, he's going to have a car crash, he's going to have a divorce, uh, his children is going to rebel against him. God doesn't plan those things. Those things came from because bad things came from sin, came from Satan, doesn't came from God, doesn't come from God. It came from sin of people. That God doesn't plan bad things for them. God plans to draw them back to Jesus. God plans to save them, give them eternal life. Okay. Now, if you have more questions, you can still type it here and then I write down. And then you can also tell me what time you want to have lunch. Okay, now we're going to go on with the teaching, motivating people to read the Bible. Now I hope from the last session you got the idea that we want to motivate people with God's grace. We want to move, motivate people to love God because God is so wonderful. He's the only person who loves you so much and who can bless you. There are all kinds of reasons to love Him. And when you love Him, you have peace and joy and strength and blessings and your life will go higher and higher. Why not love Him? So to motivate people to love God because He's the one who really devote His heart to you. He devote His heart to you, His time to us. He devote His time to you, to love you, to bless you. And then to pray is to be connected with God, to love God and enjoy His love and then He will change our life. So that will motivate us. And then to motivate people to read the Bible. Now, as you notice, all my teachings, I have a lot of Bible verses. That because I know the Bible verses are always true. God always hold on to the promises in the Bible. So when I know a certain Bible verse, I know the, uh, what God says, I know that this is firm and sure and will not change. Therefore, I like the Bible and I try to remember the Bible verses but I mostly remember first in Chinese and then secondly in English. And I've, I remember many Bible verses in Chinese so that I can uh, remind ourselves of the blessings of God and remind ourselves myself of uh, how to follow Him and how to serve Him. Okay, so to motivate people to read the Bible, we don't just say read the Bible so much and have to read the Bible. Uh, if you don't read the Bible, what will happen? But we will tell them the good things about God. 2 Timothy 2.13 If we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Now, this is one big reason why we read the Bible because He is always faithful. Even when we are faithless, even when we fail Him, even when we sin, He still is faithful. And He cannot deny Himself. He deny, cannot deny His promises. When He promises to forgive us and give us eternal life when we repent and trust in Him, He cannot change that. When He promised when we uh, serve God even by giving a cup of cold water, He will for sure reward us. Now, when we do it from a sincere heart because of Jesus, because this person is Christian, or when we want to bring the person to Jesus, or one, when we want to glorify Jesus and we do it to a little one, God will for sure remember. So this, He will always keep His promises that we can be sure. So. This is the reason why we want to read the Bible because the Bible has so many promises of God and they are all sure. Now, if someone promises you, I will give you so much money if you do this, you for sure will hold on to the promise and then you, you know, make sure that he write it down in writing uh, that this document is notarized so that make sure that the person, what he promises will come true. Now, for God, he already gave us the promises in the Bible. So why not read the Bible? So first point, God is always faithful. That makes him God very beautiful 
His promises are always trustworthy. The Bible is full of His promises. So that makes God very beautiful because we, you know, sometimes even our parents don't keep the promises. Now we, uh, sometimes because of the, uh, they cannot do it. Sometimes because, because of the forgetfulness. But most of the time, actually, our parents are nice to us. They are the nicest people. But even parents who are the nicest people that they will still forget some of the promises. But God never forget one single promise of His. So He's very beautiful. He, he keeps all the promises. Heaven is like what He describes. So we can know for sure that one day when we go to heaven, everything will be very, very beautiful. And, and then when we understand and trust in God's Word, we will become secure in God and we will have great wisdom. So when we trust in God's Word, His promises, then we'll be secure in God. Then we have confidence. We will not be moved by people. We will not be affected by environment. And we'll have great wisdom because the Word of God has, has a lot of wisdom. So why not read the Bible when the Bible can give us wisdom and the promises of God? And then the next point, Psalm 119 verse 105. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now like this person walk. <coughs> walking in the woods, that she could stumble. But with the lamp, then she can walk safely. So the Bible is the lamp to my feet will guide me. So first point, we don't know our future, but God has a wonderful plan for us. If we obey Him, God will make His wonderful plan come true. So we don't know our future. We don't know what's happening in the future. But if we follow God, the Word of God will become the lamb to my feet that for sure will guide my feet, guide my future. And then things will happen according to His promises and everything will turn out to be wonderful. So that's wonderful about our lives when we have Jesus. Things will be wonderful. We have the promise we can become wonderful people, great people used by God. And then number two, we don't have to worry about our future when we follow God's Word. So we don't have to worry about oh, what will happen when one day uh, my family member dies, uh, when I don't have money, uh, when I don't have any more work, what will happen? We don't have to worry because God is, His Word is the lamb to my feet. Okay? And then the next verse, Hebrews 4, 12. For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Word of God is like the sword, double-edged sword, that is living, is alive, because the Holy Spirit moves in the Word of God. So the Word of God is alive, and is powerful, and is sharper than any two-edged sword, that it can pierce, even to the division of soul and spirit. It will divide our spirit and soul, and discern what is inside to the joints and marrow. Now here just described that the Word of God can go deep into us. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It will show the intention of our hearts and our thoughts. Now I have known some Christians and even pastors, they try to cheat. Now, they, they know the hearts. They know that they are cheating. And God knows that too. Can, do we think God is so weak that He cannot discern our thoughts, that we can lie to God and He doesn't know it? God will know for sure. So if a person serves God, and then he's cheating God, and he's stealing money, there is no escape. Because God can discern. God already knows ahead of time He's going to cheat. And God can uh, discipline and punish and God still wants that person to come back to Him because God is love. God always wants the person to come back to Him. But if the person doesn't repent, one day he will face the punishment, the eternal punishment of God. So here, the problems in our lives block God's blessing from us. So the problems, the negative thoughts and emotions, our sins, our bad relationship. And if we let God's Word discern and change our lives, our lives will go high, very high. So, if we let God discern our heart, 
when we read the Bible, very often when we hear someone preaching or when we read the Bible, we discern there are there is a, a lies in our heart, there are negative thoughts, there are um, hatred, dislike, anger in our heart. Then the Word of God will pierce our soul and then we'll obey the Word of God. The Word of God will change us. So when we remember the Word of God, then our life will be changed because the Word of God will show what is inside our heart. And then 2 Timothy 3.16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that a man of God may be complete throughout, uh, the, sorry, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God, that God inspired the word of God and it's profitable, it's benefit, it's beneficial to us for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, to point out the sins of people, for correction, to correct our thinking, for instruction in righteousness, to tell us what to do right. So reproof means to point out our sins, to say what is, uh, to tell us that we are wrong, for corrections, to correct us, to turn us away from the bad ways. And then instruction in righteousness, then what should we do? Tell us what to do to follow the uh, righteousness of God, to follow the commandment of God, so that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, so that we can be complete, that our whole person is com complete, our spirit, soul, and body is complete, that we need all, you know, the spirit connected to God, our mind is healthy, and soul is healthy, our emotions are healthy, and then our thinking, our body is healthy, that the whole person is healthy, then we are thoroughly equipped for every good work. So when we build ourselves up with the Word of God, it will train us, equip to train us for every good work. And I thank God for me to, uh, that God uses the Bible to speak to me and I remember, I try to memorize Bible verses early in my Christian life and I meditate on the Word of God and then with time I remember many Bible verses and I apply it to my life and I know how to apply it to my teaching and God from time to time would show me new ways to teach on certain Bible verses. Okay, number one point here, first point, God is the best teacher. God will speak through His Word. When we read His Word, He will guide us onto the best path. So. He is the best teacher who will guide us. When we read the Word of God and meditate on the Word of God, then when we read the Word of God, He will guide us. Now, there are many times that I, sometimes I read the Bible, suddenly something opened to me. Uh, one example, when I read about the end times, about the second coming of Jesus, and Paul said that, and those who are in Christ will be raised from the dead and we together with them will be uh, taken up into heaven and to be with the Lord forever. Now here it says that we, so it includes Paul. So from this verse I know that Paul is going to experience that, um, that resurrection and also the transformation and the rapture. And uh, now in the future, I will talk about the rapture, when it happened. From the Bible, it happens when Jesus comes back the second time. Uh, so when I look at that word, we, I know that Paul is part of it. And there are other Bible verses I put together. And then I have a, a whole picture of the last, the, the end time, uh, according to the Bible so that I can know what's going to happen. But there are things that the Bible has not revealed. They're not complete picture of everything at the end time, but there are enough review that we can know uh, what is going to happen. That's sufficient. The Bible is sufficient for us to know what's going to happen, the most important things. And number two, many people experience specific guidance when they read the Bible. Now, many people read certain part and then they suddenly move to mission work or miss, uh, move to evangelism. So God can use the Word of God to guide us generally, but also specifically for certain tasks. 
So when we read the Bible, we'll be guided by God. There are many people, they read the Word of God, suddenly they have the motivation to serve God. So that came from reading the Bible. Okay, now the next point, motivate people to live a holy life, to not to sin. Galatians 6, 8, For he who sows his flesh will of the flesh reap destruction, but he who sows the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So the Bible tells us that we have the flesh, the sinful nature, and also we have the Holy Spirit living in us. So we can follow the sinful nature or the Holy Spirit and our new nature. When we follow the sinful nature, what will happen will we'll reap destruction. There will be destruction to more and more parts of his life because Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. He came to steal, he wanted to steal everything from our life. So when people don't obey God, Satan will steal. So that answered the question earlier. What will happen if they don't obey? Not only do they don't get the blessings of God, Satan, Satan have the right to steal and to kill and to destroy everything he has. And it's terrible. Can you bear to let any part of your body or your life to be destroyed? Do you, can you bear that your house is destroyed by Satan or by sins or by people? Can you bear that your health, even a small part of body is destroyed by someone? So when we disobey God, it can lead to destruction. Destruction of the body, of the life, of the future, of the plan of God for us. And sometimes there is no turning back. Even though when we repent, we can go higher, but it, we might not be able to go back to plan A. We might be, be able to go back up a little bit. I know some Christians and even pastors who were put in jail and after that, it's very hard for them to go back to the same level as before. So people will reap destruction. So when people live in sin and don't have a holy life, the result is destruction. Can you bear any part of your body being destroyed? Can you bear your family being destroyed? Your reputation being destroyed? We cannot bear that consequence. But when we sow to the Spirit and listen to the Holy Spirit, we'll reap it everlasting life and also peace, love and joy and all these things will be added to us. So, so th there's a big reason why we should follow the holiness of God. So first point, God gives us the Holy Spirit and wants to give us eternal life. But when we sow to the flesh, the sinful nature, we will reap destruction to our lives. So God gives us the Holy Spirit to guide us. If we obey the Holy Spirit, then we'll reap uh, everlasting life and blessings in this life and we all hear from the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit speak to us and say uh, repent you know tell us our sins if we obey then God is very happy the whole heaven is happy for us but if we don't repent and we continue sin then we'll bear the consequence of destruction even though God will forgive us when we repent but there will be destruction for instance if someone steal from a shop now he repents, God forgives him, but he might be put in jail. If someone has an extramarital relationship, he asks God forgiveness, God will forgive him. But he might destroy his family and at least destroy the trust of his spouse. The spouse will lose trust in him. Point number two, if people sow to the flesh, what they do will not count in the kingdom of God. Now here I talk about people who serve God. There are people who serve God, but they steal money, but they yell at people, they get angry, they, they do things that uh, cause harm to Christians, they compete, they step down on people, make people feel bad, and don't give people an opportunity to serve God. They follow the flesh. What happens is, the ministry to God doesn't count. It doesn't count. Because uh, in the ne next verse, is uh, later we'll, we'll talk about here even when people cast out demons and do wonders and, uh, and prophesy and then if they don't follow God then it's, then it's nothing and also God doesn't know them if they don't have a living relationship with God okay and next Bible verse 2 Timothy 2.20 
But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses, cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So Paul here uses an illustration from in a big house. There are vessels of gold and silver and also uh, uh, wood and clay and also some for honor and some for dishonor. So even our vessels in a home, some are more precious, some are more important. And then if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, so from the dishonor thing, if a person cleanses himself from sins, he will be a vessel for honor, that he will be an honorable vessel. God will like him and he is sanctified, he is cleansed and forgiven and useful for the master. He will be useful. Many people do things, you know, this so-called serve God, but they are not useful in the kingdom of God. They can cause people to stumble. But when we are holy, then we are useful for the master, prepare for every good work. So here it talks about two kinds of Christians. First, God wants to make us vessels of, for honor. If we live a holy life, we will, He will make us vessels for honor and sins bring dishonor to our lives. So if we live a holy life, we become vessels of honor. So do you want to be honored by God? Do you want to be honored by people also? Because people will know our motives. And if we follow God, we'll be honored by God and by people. And our whole life will be without regret. And it's full of joy and satisfaction. Everything is good. And then Proverbs 18:12. Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. So here it talks about humility and pride. So uh, holy life, part of holy life is being humble, that we are nothing. We are sinners. Even though we try to live a holy life, we still have sin. So we repent of every little sin that we have. So there is nothing to be proud of. And the fact that we are changed by God is His grace, not because of us. So God is a humble God. God is a, He's a humble God to bless us. So when a person is pride, then there is, sorry, then there is destruction. And then before honor is humility. So when we live a humble life, and Jesus is a good example that He is humble to serve us, that He comes to serve us and He was put to the cross and did not, He did not fight for Himself. So that's his humility. And Matthew 18, 4, Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So when we humble ourselves, then we are the greatest person in the whole world. So first point, Jesus is humble. He's humble to die, come to die for us. All who are humble like Jesus are treasured by God. So if we are humble like Jesus, then we are treasured by God. God will honor us. We, if we are humble like a little child. And then number two, many sins come from pride. From humility, many virtues come out. Love, care, meekness. So why do people, you know, when people are humble, they would see that everything they have is from God. They have more motivation to love people, care about people, and to be gentle, to be meek. But then when people are proud, then they want to compete and they want to hurt people. They are angry with people. So it's, it's best to pursue humility. And then warning. Now this is warning, so the use of the law. So I have put in here not only motivation by grace, but also warning from, from the law. When people don't obey God. Matthew 7.21 That uh, the first part says that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he, only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawless, lawlessness. So when people are in sin, even when they do things in a church, they cast out demons, they prophesy, they cast out demons and do wonders, it doesn't count. If they live in a life of anger, of lie, liars and uh, adultery, 
they must repent. When they repent, truly repent. Now, repentance doesn't mean some people say, "Oh, I repent of this, of this sin," and then they continue to sin again. Repent of the sin means I'm very sorry. I know that that offends God. Please help me to change. I don't want to sin again because I know that sin will bring destruction. I want to hate sin. Now, that's very important. We want to hate sin. We want to teach our people to hate sin because sin will destroy our whole life, and sin will give the devil a foothold to destroy our whole life, to come and steal and kill and destroy. So we don't want Satan to come and kill and steal and destroy. Then we want to uh, to obey God. So here, first point: God rewards people who obey Him. So when we obey Him and serve Him, He'll reward us. And many serve God for money or for power and lives in sin, and some could lose reward or even salvation. So many people serve God and then they live for money, and then they could. The first is they lose reward, and the second is they could lose salvation. Okay. Now, this is the last point to motivate people to take care of problems in their lives. Because many people have problems in their life and they don't take care of them, so uh, this is about being affected by people. Psalm thirty-seven, seven: Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret. Fret means be anxious. Do not be anxious when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret; it leads only to evil. So in Psalm 37, it says that stay still in front of the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret. Do not be anxious when people succeed in their ways. Do not be、uh, jealous and do not be angry because these are wicked people. They they succeed in their life. Let go, and then when they、uh, when they wick,、uh, carry out the wicked schemes, refrain. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret; it leads only to evil. So, when we are angry, when we are anxious, it will lead to evil. So, we need to take care of this problem, not to be affected by people. When people have problems, they let go. It's okay; it's their problem. But we try to love them and pray for them and help them. But、uh, they don't listen to me. I still care for them and try to do my best to change them. So that is the right attitude. Instead of being angry with them, so the first point here, God has a has planned great blessings for us. No one can take away His blessings except ourselves. So He God has planned wonderful things, and these people who yell at us, these people who are sinning, they cannot take away my blessings, but I can if I get angry, if I are affected by them, then my I will lose my blessings. And number two, if someone is wicked, it is their problem. If I am affected by him, I will lose God's blessing. So if someone is wicked, it's their problem. I don't have to be bothered by them. I just do what I can do. I pray for them. I be kind to them. Now, when we are kind to people who are bad to us, God like that very much, and God will bless us more. And then warning to people who don't take care of their personal problems, James one nineteen. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So here it talks about let everyone be swift to hear, be quick to hear, listen to people, and and listen to God and listen to people, slow to speak. Don't Speak so much. Listen, listen more, and slow to wrath. Do not be angry easily, for the wrath of God does not produce the righteousness of God. Because the anger of God does not produce righteousness; it will produce bad effect. So the first point here: God blesses everyone who seek, who seeks God's righteousness. And number two: if people get angry and hurt other people. They are not seeking God's righteousness. They will lose God's blessings. So when we are angry, the wrath of God, the wrath of God doesn't produce the righteousness of God. So if we get angry, we, if we have anger and hurt other people, then we are not seeking God's righteousness, and we'll lose God's blessings. 
and the meek shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5.5. 5. Now here, it doesn't say inherit the land. It's the earth. It's not just the land for your house. It's the earth. That we own the earth. We have ownership of the, of the whole earth that we can bless the earth. That I have the right of God to come and bless the world. I am the master of the world in a godly sense that I what I do can affect the whole world so the meek shall inherit the earth oh here oh, there's this the last point motivate people to serve God Mark 9 41 for her, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ assuredly I say to you he will by no means lose his reward so here it says that whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ. Now here it explains Matthew. Because in Matthew it says that, you know, uh, whoever in, in uh, because uh, in Jesus' name, because the name of disciple, and give a cup of cold water to a little one, he will by no means lose his reward. So what does it mean to give a cup of cold water to a little one? The little one, who is the little one? Now here it says, the little one to drink in my name because so whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name so in Jesus name because you belong to Christ so because you are a Christian and give to us then he will by no means lose his reward so this promise is mainly to do good things to Christians or to bring people to Christ when we do evangelism we can help people now it doesn't mean we don't help other people when there is a need we can help other people but mostly we want to help Christians and we also want to help people to bring people to Jesus so God wants us to serve him and bless others God wants us to do that and two he notices every little thing we do for God and we reward us richly and if God will reward for a cup of water, He will reward much more when we devote our lives to serving Him and blessing others. So if God will reward us for a cup of cold water, when we help someone spiritually and bring people to Jesus and help them to grow, then He will reward us much more if we have a pure motive. If we have a motive to bless people and to glorify God, then God will for sure bless us. So this is assurance of reward when we follow God and when we're faithful to God there's assurance that when we are faithful to God that he will for sure bless us so this give us um, take away our pressure because many people say I cannot do great things for God but here Jesus used this illustration of a cup of water because an anyone could give a cup of cold water to someone so if we give a cup of water to someone, we will by no means lose reward. If we do it because of Christ, we do it because the person is a Christian or to glorify God, then by no means we will lose reward. So Jesus is saying, any little thing you do counts. So when we say nice things to people, greet people, welcome them, make them feel happy, uh, encourage them, pray for them, all this God will count and for sure will receive rewards. So this give us assurance yes we can encourage the members whatever you do to the people when you see the newcomers encourage them find out about them uh, talk with them build up the relationship and God is very happy that you do that and then here is another motivation to serve God Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28 come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and I'm, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now in this Bible, ver three Bible verses, there are two times they talk about rest. Here, there's two times. Now when we read the Bible, we try to be careful. Read every word. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. So everyone, everyone who has to work hard and uh, have heavy burden, come to me and I'll give you rest. So this is the first kind of rest. And then take my yoke upon me. Yoke is what is put on the, the shoulder of a, uh, an ox to pull the plow, to plow the, uh, the ground for 
uh, sowing crops. So take my yoke. So Jesus has a yoke. Take this yoke with Jesus. That means serve God together with Jesus. And the second thing, the first thing is serve God with Jesus. And the second thing is learn from Jesus. Learn from his life. Learn from his example. For I am gentle and lowly. So I am a gentle and humble God. Jesus is very gentle and humble. So we learn from him. Learn from him to be humble and gentle. And you will find rest for your souls. Now here he put the word soul. So is the inner part of the person that you find rest in the inner part of you. Now the first part when we come to Jesus for rest, that's the one kind of rest. The second kind of rest is when we serve God with Jesus, with Jesus. That means we don't just serve God ourselves, but we serve God with the presence of God. We serve God by praying to God, with, to God all the time and learn from Him, learn His lifestyle, learn His word then we'll find rest in the soul that will have rest in our whole person. The whole person will have rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus said here that my yoke is easy. Why? Because Jesus will help us. So it will be easy. It's light because I will take away the burden. You, it's, you just do what I tell you to do and you have results. So first point, when we come to Jesus, we'll find the first level of peace. But when we take His yoke, that means serve with Him and learn from Him, we'll find rest that will go into our souls, a deeper rest. And then Jesus' yoke is easy because when we stay close to Him, He will help us all the way. So when we serve God, we can serve God with joy and peace and relaxation. At the same time, we want to do our best. We want to do our best and we want to serve God without pressure. And we don't want to give pressure to people too. Now, sometimes people give pressure to other people and say, you did not do well enough. Uh, you, you, you have to improve. You have to work harder. Uh, you have no result. You didn't bring anyone to Jesus. So that's giving pressure. But instead, we can tell them, God is happy with what you do. Now, we can evaluate what you do, how you can improve. But there's no heavy pressure. We just try our best to do the best, and God is very happy with that and then we can improve we can keep improving but in in the process of improving we don't have to feel burdens we don't have to be pressured okay and then another motivation to serve god matthew 9 37 to 38 then he said to his disciples the harvest truly is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray the lord of the harvest to send our laborers into his harvest so the harvest truly is plentiful. There are a lot of people who need salvation and they are ready. But the laborers are few. There are not enough laborers. There are not enough workers. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So pray that more workers will come out. So God wants more workers. God wants more people to serve him. But there are not too many people who are willing. But when we are willing to serve God, God is very happy and He will bless us in this life and in the future. So I hope we all have the motivation to serve God because to serve Almighty God and to serve a God who always blesses His workers, then we, you know, there are all kinds of reasons that we should, should serve Him. So first point here, Jesus cares about all people and want more people saved. He cares about all people. He wants to send out more laborers to harvest. And second point, God is very pleased with people who have the heart to reap the harvest and train more workers. So we want to reap the harvest ourselves and we want to pray for more workers and then we want to train the workers and lead them to serve God together. And this is what I'm doing now. I want to train more people to serve God in God's way. God's way is with the presence of God, with God's attitude, with God's presence, with joy and peace and no burdens with a peaceful heart a light heart to serve God at the same time we want to work hard but at the same time we don't have pressure another uh, motivation to serve God it's a very wonderful verse John 12 26 if anyone serves me let him follow me and where I am there my servant will be also if anyone serves me him my father will honor this is a very wonderful verse. If anyone serves Jesus, 
Let him follow Jesus. So first, the relationship. If we want to serve Jesus, follow Jesus. Be close to him. Have a close relationship. And also follow his way of life, his way of talking, his way of relating to people. So follow him. And where Jesus is, there my servant will be also. So, so when we follow him, then wherever he works, then we'll be with him. So that we, we follow him uh, wherever he goes. He guides us and we follow him. And if anyone serves Jesus, him, my Father, will honor. Father, the Father will honor us if we serve him with a true heart. Not for money, not for power, not for reputation, but for God himself. Then God is very happy and he will honor us. First point, God is pleased with people who serve him. He will be with them and will honor them. And these people will become great. When God honors us, He will become great and we can do greater things. And number two, when we serve God, we want to follow Jesus closely. Just as the verse says, follow me. To have a close relationship with Him and to go to where He wants us to go to. And three, we will be servants like Jesus too, my servants. So we be servants to serve others. So we are His servants. So we, are, we have an attitude of serving God and serving people and not have an attitude of I'm higher than you but have an attitude of serving God. And then warning. The Bible has warning too. Matthew 25, 30 And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. And verse 41 Then he will also say to those on the left hand Depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. Now here, Jesus warns about people who don't serve God. Matthew 25, 30 is in the parable of the talents. So the one servant with the one talent buried the talent and then he was called a wicked and lazy servant and also called the unprofitable servant. He was thrown into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now we know that we are not saved by serving God. We are saved by grace through faith. But when we have real faith in God, the faith will always bear fruit. Then we'll love God and we'll love people, care about people, help people and serve God. So serving God doesn't necessarily mean having a position in church, but to bless people and uh, honor God, glorify God. All these are serving God. And then God will remember all those things. Of course, if we can do more for God, it would be the better. So the more we serve God, the better. And then in uh, 41, there is the parable of the sheep and the goats. And then those to the left, hand, left side, depart from me, you cursed, into an everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and the angel. So they'll be thrown into fire when they don't, uh, do the good things to the little ones of Jesus, the, uh, the brothers of Jesus. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. So it's for every Christian that we want to bless other people, that we don't want to, uh, you know, seeing other people suffering and not to help them. So down below, anything we do to glorify God and bless people in Jesus' name and serving God, is serving God. So anything we glorify God and bless people is serving God. And those who don't serve can go into hell. We are saved by grace through faith. Faith always bears fruit. We are not saved by serving God. But when we have real faith, then we will always serve God. Hallelujah. So we finish these sessions now. If you have questions, you can send me now and I can answer before we go to the next uh, session. But I don't know if we have time. Okay, if you don't have questions, we'll, we'll pray now. And what I pray is that every one of us learn to use God's grace to motivate people, not to just yell at people. You have to do this. Now, some people think if I yell at them, then they will change more. That's not true. Yelling doesn't change people. Yelling just makes them do it for now. But they don't have the continued motivation. But when we tell them, God is happy with you, whatever you do for Him. God is very happy. 
and God will reward you and bless your whole life. And there is nothing more profitable than to serve God. Do you want to do that? So let us pray and ask God for, for help. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. You are so wonderful. You are a wonderful God. You are a loving God. And you give us motivation to have a close relationship with you and to pray and to read the Bible and to obey God and to serve God. And, you know, everything, God, you have prepared for us and whatever we do for you, you are very happy. Please help us to appreciate you, to love you, to honor you, to respect you and to obey you and serve you. Whenever we do this thing, you are very happy. Even when we give a cup of cold water to a little one, you will by no means lose the reward. You are always happy with us. Lord, help us to serve you with all our heart, to love you, to honor you. Father, we thank you so much. We love you so much. You are such a wonderful God. You are a good God. You are a wonderful God. You are a powerful God, and you are a God of blessings. And no one can run away from you. Please help us to motivate people with God's love, to obey God's law that we want to motivate people with God's love, that people know that, that uh, God loves us, care about us, and He's happy, you are happy with everything we do for you. So we have the motivation to follow you and love you. Thank you, Jesus. And whatever we do for you, you are very happy. We want to serve you more and more. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I, I clarify this again. The motivation comes from grace mainly. <clears throat> Only when people disobey totally and don't repent, then the motivation comes from the law. Then it becomes warning. Sometimes people need warning, but that should not be the main motivation. Because if people only do it because of warning, then when there is no warning, they won't do it. We should do it because God loves us so much, we want to do it. And then... Um, now, for everyone, we still have this warning in the heart, but that's not the main motivation. I know that if I don't serve God, if I'm lazy, then I have to face God and there can be you know, discipline or even punishment or more. But I don't serve God because I, I'm afraid of the punishment. I serve God because I see God is so wonderful and I see all these people in need. I want to bless them. I want to help them. And... I know that when I serve them, I bless them, God is very happy. Actually, I don't think of the reward I will get. I, I just think of, God is, you're so good. I want to do what pleases you. And I want to bless these people so that these people have eternal life. And, and then they will be faithful following you. So that's my motivation. And I hope you all have the motivation and help people to have that motivation. And sometimes when people are not motivated, we can try to break down the reasons of lack of motivation. Now, some of the reasons that they don't have motivation are laziness. Then we can tell them, if you're lazy in your work, your daily work, you have no food. And you're lazy in God's kingdom, you have no fruit in your Christian life, and then you will have to face God. And then some people say, I cannot do it. But Jesus says, even a cup of cold water, you by no means lose the reward. So there is no excuse. Every little thing we can do. And there are people who say, well, I have met Christians who are terrible. They hurt me, so I don't want to serve God anymore. But that's people. And there are all kinds of bad people. But we don't want to be affected by them. God is good. So is God good to you? If God is good, then we want to respond to God and not to respond to those bad people. And sometimes people say, well, the pastor is not so nice, so I don't want to serve God with him. Then there are two problems. One is pastor's problem. Second is uh, his own problem. As pastors, I encourage all of you, all of us, to be faithful and to be loving and kind and gentle to the people so that it won't give Satan an excuse and a foothold to attack the church. Because if the pastor is not gentle and kind and loving to people, then he will cause the members to stumble. The members will fall because of him. So I hope everyone will really follow God and be faithful to God and, and then be a good example. And then for the pa pa uh, member whose pastor is not faithful, it's not doing good. Still, 
God will ask this member what you have done for me. So even if the pastor is not good, we still have the responsibility to be faithful to God. Uh, the pastor's problem is no excuse for not serving God. So I hope we'll try to help people to break down. In the message, we can break down the reasons why they don't want to serve God or don't want to obey God, uh, don't want to pray, don't want to have a loving relationship with God. We'll help them to handle their problem. At the same time, we tell them it's so wonderful to be living in God. And very important is our example. If we enjoy God, that people see that we enjoy God. Hallelujah, God is so wonderful. God is good, hallelujah. And people see that we're happy with God. Then they're motivated to love God also. So I hope we all will see that when we love God and follow God, God is very happy. And then when this joy comes out and the people will be changed by us and then people will be motivated to follow God. So God bless you all. I, let me see if there is any more questions. There might be. I think there is. Um, okay, there is a question. The question is, when someone reads the Bible, she falls asleep. Now, there are a few reasons. First, the person is not used to reading the Bible. The person has problem concentrating. Uh, maybe the person has no interest in the Bible. Now, the, to correct this problem, first, the person can spend more time praying. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The more we concentrate in the prayer, concentrate in the Lord, the more we'll have strength and joy and a concentration, the ability to concentrate. So the presence of God can give us strength to concentrate. And the second is uh, the person can start reading short passages, not long passages, just short passages and apply it. And then pray. And then read another short passage. So make it shorter and easier at the beginning. Then when it's shorter, he can concentrate and think. You know, when he's thinking, he can be walking around. For instance, it says that... Um, when you do to one of these little ones. So what can I do? Lord, what can I do? What can I do to the little one? And who are these little ones? And, and so we can meditate on the one verse and then how can I do it? How can I start to bless them? If they have all these problems, how can I start to bless them? So uh, this way we can meditate on one verse and then think over it over and over again. That would sink in our heart. And gradually we can be able to concentrate more. And to concentrate in Bible verses, we can mark the Bible, mark certain words, you know. This is important word, put a line underneath. Don't mark everything. Some people mark every line, that's no use. Mark the keywords. So these keywords, mark the keywords and then pay attention to it, okay? So, um, and also sometimes it's health problem, you know, that the person maybe needs enough sleep and also some exercise so that the person's mind is more active and also uh, it's emotions too affect person's ability to concentrate if a person's unhappy a lot then it's hard for him, him or her to be, to concentrate and if a person is angry yell at people and fight in a the family then it's hard to concentrate so all these are put together the whole person whole life if we love God more, the spirit and the mind is peaceful and calm and, and meditate on the word of God and it's always kind to people. So the mind and the emotions is happy to handle the emotions. So one session I will, in the future I will talk about emotions, how to handle the emotions and then be happy about everything, enjoy God. Then the whole person is healthy. That way, the ability to read the Bible and to pray and to be connected to God will be stronger and stronger okay god bless you and hope you use the prayer i taught last time the prayer of uh, grace to declare the love of god god is loving me god is helping me god is with me now god is blessing everyone god is blessing me when i come to him hallelujah god is good and then uh, that's grace from god to us and then prayer of worship i thank you lord i worship you lord i adore you lord i need you lord so that's from us to God. And then interactive prayer. 
Whenever, whenever I pray to God, God is happy with me. Whenever I, I praise God, God is very happy to me and He'll bless me and He'll help me. Hallelujah, th praise you, Lord. That way we pray more and then we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit more. I'll talk about the, being filled with the Holy Spirit uh, maybe in the next session.